Last week in Seoul, a professional Go player Isador and artificial intelligence AlphaGo had the match of the century. AlphaGo program triumphed in its final game against Lee to win the series 4-1. The entire world has shown a keen interest in the match of human versus AI, but with profound questions. Will artificial intelligence surpass human intelligence? And will it contribute to improving the quality of human life or impoverish it? On today's Upfront, we'll discuss the expectations as well as the concerns regarding artificial intelligence. Can machine defeat human? Can human defend itself against machine? Historic match between man and machine took place. 드디어 인간과 인공지능의 대결의 이제 첫 걸음이 아닌가 이렇게 생각을 해봅니다. 제가 할 일은 내일 좋은 바둑, 또 재밌는 바둑, 또 아름다운 바둑을 두는 것이 아닌가 싶습니다. 이세돌, one of the strongest Go players in the world, has been well known for his creative and brilliant moves. AlphaGo, Google DeepMind's artificial intelligence program, mounted a challenge to a human being. Artificial intelligence is based on big data, which analyzes a large volume of data. It is the process of teaching computers to distinguish different things, following the information processing system of the human brain. Along with its accurate calculations and intuition, as well as its algorithm that uses 1,200 CPUs and makes 100,000 computations per second, AlphaGo triumphed in its final game against a Go Grandmaster. You know, AlphaGo has an estimate uh, all the way through the game of how it thinks it's doing. Um, it's not always correct, though, of course. Uh, for this game, AlphaGo was pretty confident. Um, but uh, in the middle, it was, uh, it was uh, about uh, even. And then towards the uh, second half of the game, it got more confident. Um, but certainly, uh, the team wasn't very confident because all the professional commentators were uh, changing their minds and uh, unsure. So, um, but AlphaGo was, was um, steadily more confident as the game went on. So AlphaGo seemed to know um, what was happening. Isedol versus AlphaGo. This match of the century has served as a momentum to let the world know that we are now on the threshold of an era of artificial intelligence. Commercialization of intelligent robot and driverless vehicle have been promoted, and artificial intelligence programs have been developed in the creative fields like art and music. The global market for artificial intelligence is expected to grow to 200 billion US dollars by the year 2017. Korea has also taken necessary measures to boost the fourth industrial revolution based on artificial intelligence. 인공지능도 사람에 의한 기술 진보의 산물이며 과거의 수많은 발명품들이 그래 왔듯이 인류에게 더 많은 혜택을 가져다 줄 것으로 믿습니다. 핵심 과학 기술 정책과 사업, 부처 간 이견 대립 사안을 톱다운 방식으로 전략을 마련하고 조정 역할을 수행하면서 우리 R&D 시스템의 근본적 혁신을 추진해 갈 것입니다. Is it a crisis of mankind or are we on the threshold of a new era of advanced technology? Upfront discusses the ideal direction of humanity amid the rising expectations and concerns over artificial intelligence. For today's discussion, we're joined by two great experts in the studio. Uh, first, we are joined by uh, Professor Chang Byung Tak, a professor of computer science and engineering at Seoul National University, who is also director of Institute for Cognitive Science at the same university. And we have Professor Seo Il Hong, a professor of electronic engineering at College of Engineering at Hanyang University, who is also chair of International Conference on Intelligent Robots and Systems 2016. Welcome to the program. Yep. 
Okay, for this uh, interesting and very fascinating issue, uh, I'll, I'll turn to uh, Professor Sal first. I'm sure you have watched this program or the, the matches uh, with a profound interest. Did you actually expect that uh, AlphaGo would win or how did you uh, watch the whole series? Yeah, um, I watched the series of matches uh, between AlphaGo and Isidore. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, I read the uh, article about the uh, AlphaGo uh, published in Nature. Uh, at that time, I personally thought AlphaGo would be very strong enough to win the uh, Go professionals. Mm -hmm. But I really wish it uh, that the uh, Isedol won the game. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you really rooting for the human side because of uh, uh, um, <laughs> the uh, emotional Emotionally support? human right. side, yeah. Mm -hmm. But technically, AlphaGo may, won, may win the game, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, uh, did, you, did you expect the same result? Or? Actually, I uh, was struck by the victory of AlphaGo. Mm -hmm. I thought ultimately the machine would win sometime in the future, but I was surprised by that, the fact that the future had already come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So eventuality has shortened its stride, I guess. Right. Okay. Yeah. Let, let's talk about why we, we think that uh, it is surprising one way or the other. Uh, by talking about how it works. I mean, of course, AlphaGo was developed by Google's uh, DeepMind, uh, DeepMind team. And um, uh, I guess people's it, kind of notion of it, and I guess me included, is that the, the computer having a, a storage and also processing CPUs, they can uh, quickly calculate uh, the probabilities or instances mm -hmm. of uh, different scenarios. And because it has accumulated a big data, uh, it can look it up. Uh, different, you know, patterns and di different kind of databases accumulated over time. So, is it a matter of just a storage space and fast uh, CPUs, or does this uh, uh, indicate that some, in professional way, uh, some profound way, a, a leapfrog into uh, into the field of artificial intelligence? So, in terms of how it works. Um, Professor, um, so you could start. Yeah, uh, speed up computation is not the only factor to win the play. Um, in case all possible moves, moves has to be searched, then even millions of computers uh, cannot compute the best move in a finite time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me explain how AlphaGo uh, really works. AlphaGo has three Go professional guides, like a tour guides. Mm -hmm. It's uh, actually a three deep neural networks for play in a real time. Um, first guide, uh, named as a supervised learning policy network, uh, is able to predict what uh, next move, storm moves, uh, will be the most promising uh, in the sense that the human goal professionals uh, want to select. Mm -hmm. And then second guide, it is a value networks, uh, it evaluates the, the, the moves that the first guide recommend. Mm -hmm. But uh, the winning rate, is the, the value, will not be perfect. So second guide asks third guide, third tour guide, mm -hmm. go guide, to simulate the games. Mm -hmm. After simulation, winning probability will be updated, mm -hmm. and uh, this process will be repeated until all possible storm moves are evaluated. Mm -hmm. This is the um, principle of the AlphaGo. Uh, as the name AlphaGo suggests, artificial intelligence has uh, received a great uh, attention uh, from uh, the global uh, society through the game of Go. It has brought about a significant impact on the field of Go games as well as science. Uh, we had a chance to meet an expert on artificial intelligence who happens to be also a professional Go player, to hear more about the significance of the recent match series. Professional Go player Yi Se-dol was in an unfavorable position in his match with AlphaGo from the start. Li didn't have a lot of information on AlphaGo when he decided to play the games, and the match schedule was also unfavorable for Li. 
However, AlphaGo had a preferable environment so that it could perfectly demonstrate its ability. As a result, AlphaGo sealed victory over Yizhedo by showing its superior calculations at the end of the matches. So I guess Yizhedo was in a difficult position to win the game considering those conditions. The game of Go has been considered as one of the biggest challenges to overcome for artificial intelligence developers. That's why the field of science has paid a lot of attention on the result of the historic match between artificial intelligence program AlphaGo and a Go master Isadol. However, some people have said that it might be difficult for a computer to win a human being in the Go game because it is a complex and difficult game which requires high intellectual ability of humans. We've had divided opinions between the science field and the public, and the victory of AlphaGo has made a lot of headlines even after the match came to an end. Let's continue to discuss this uh, recent matches, but I want to focus on this one game where this, this is the only win that the Isador had, uh, a fourth game. Now, um, some people might say that, well, it's a complete victory for AlphaGo. It's a 4-1, one. it's a one-sided game. Mm -hmm. But other people were saying that the, the one win is very significant and has uh, impact. I, I, I want to get your reaction as to how you value the one win that you have, Dr. Chan. Um, if you consider the complexity of the uh, goal, mm -hmm. um, Actually, it's uh, surprising that the human can beat the machine. Mm -hmm. um, the mm -hmm. machine can search at the same time simultaneously many different branches of the game tree. Mm -hmm. And also, it can keep the whole memory. Mm -hmm. In addition, the AlphaGo has learned uh, the human uh, um, Go playing behaviors from uh, big data. This big data is a little bit different from the traditional big data stored in the just the internet or a database. Mm, so mm. It, it's uh, from the, the human play uh, behavior, the AlphaGo can kind of acquire the human hunch mm -hmm. or uh, uh, playing the game, diff difficult game uh, by patterns. Mm, mm. So that's... Uh, Considering that, uh, it's amazing, actually, AlphaGo has, mm, has a mm. won the human, like Isadol. So, so the victory of Isadol is actually, uh, in some sense, uh, amazing. Mm, and let, let me focus on that. Uh, it, it seems like you're saying that it's not just looking up the existing ones, uh, searching very quickly as to what that uh, move was. Um, that, that means if you have instances where that move had happened before, then the machine can uh, recognize it. But this mechanism is, in a way, creative in that even those moves that they, they didn't encounter before can be either calculated or processed to generate uh, either counter moves mm -hmm. or the new uh, set of strategies. Right. right. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe that, that's <laughs> the magic of machine learning. Right. So machines can generalize uh, in terms of rules and knowledge from a large number of instances or data. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so AlphaGo can generalize from the previous uh, match uh, data mm -hmm. to some unknown um, configurations of a Go. I see. In that case, I want to focus yeah, it, on this. part of the uh, learning. Yeah. Um, some very important things in the big data. Uh, but uh, there are uh, we two weaknesses in the learning, machine mm -hmm. learning. Um, in short, uh, underfitting of the data or overfitting of the data. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, underfitting uh, means that they, uh, 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 some shortage of the d data. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, somebody uh, may say that they uh, even stream Thirty millions of data may be very short. Um, okay, let us consider there are multiple sets of some jigsaw puzzles. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now we randomly mix all the jigsaw puzzles, mm -hmm. and then suppose half of them are missing. Mm -hmm. After that, we try to assemble one jigsaw puzzles, but in the missing uh, jigsaw puzzles, 
uh, uh, there are some overlap or some really missing. So after completing the uh, uh, whole assembly, we found that they, uh, uh, some, part, uh, some parts are uh, um, uh, redundant, mm -hmm. and the other part, uh, uh, ba ba big holes is vacancies. Right. Okay? So someone pick up the, uh, a missing uh, jigsaw puzzles and then show us where this puzzle is located. Then we cannot say because the shortage of the data. Mm, mm. The other one is overfitting. It's, uh, if some conclusion heavily relies on one or two guys, mm -hmm. then uh, it will be very highly uh, probable that uh, we have the, some wrong conclusion. Mm -hmm. If uh, um, that guy is missing or that guy has the wrong uh, uh, data. I see. So I think that they, uh, 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 the, the learning in the AlphaGo may not be perfect. I see. Okay? Because of that, the, the AlphaGo lost one game. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. well, let's focus on the, that uh, particular aspect. There was this move, uh, move number 78, mm -hmm. uh, that Isedo was put. That kind of surprised everybody. I was watching the, the TV, and the reaction from a lot of people were, uh, some people were speechless and they couldn't uh, discern what that move came from. And probably that's the same reaction that AlphaGo had because people surmised that the series of moves that AlphaGo made afterwards indicates that he did not anticipate or did not have in the database uh, what that move uh, signified. So uh, going back to what you're saying, underfeeding or overfeeding, and also your comment about uh, that uh, the human hunch development. Does that indicate that in that move, it signifies the vulnerability of AlphaGo or a certain hole in the system of AlphaGo in, in formulating its strategy? A class of com complex problems like uh, Go, mm -hmm. <clears throat> there can be always some uncertainty there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And probably the 78th uh, move or in, in the areas, there was a much uncertainty in, in any move uh, from the point of AlphaGo. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Isedol made a great uh, movement in that uh, way. So, mm -hmm. so maybe it surprised in some way the machine. Mm -hmm. Right. Which was uh, very uncertain in every move in mm -hmm. that area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and w what do you think? Because that move now happened. Do you think it patched a little hole? Or um, I guess the question is, in terms of imperfections and uncertainty, uncertainties, is that the matter of having a faster chip and, and better database? Or is that going to be a lingering uh, weaknesses of AlphaGo? Yeah, everything you talk, um, maybe the reason why AlphaGo uh, lost the one game. So mm -hmm. uh, the underfitting and overfitting is the very um, inherent problem of the lo machine learning. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe um, 30 million of the um, uh, Baduk manuals, Go manuals, uh, will not be sufficient uh, for, uh, <coughs> for uh, AlphaGo to learn the everything about the yeah, Go games. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the Isedo is very, very uh, clever. He tries to uh, put the find the uh, uh, stone moves uh, which uh, has not been encountered in mm. the learning mm. by the AlphaGo. That's the, uh, he tries to find uh, some kind of uh, empty holes uh, in the uh, AlphaGo's brain space, I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess this match was very good for AlphaGo's learning, yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about what was gained by this uh, series. Obviously, the Google uh, DeepMind team and AlphaGo had uh, its name out already. Uh, and probably we, there is a significance to the whole AI uh, field uh, because of this big event. What do you think about the impact uh, of uh, this game? Uh, of course, uh, the Google and Google DeepMind earned the big fame. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is an enormous achievement from uh, in, in, in AI community as well. Mm -hmm. Because uh, 20 years ago, chess was uh, beat 
by a machine. But during the last 20 years, um, actually, um, the, the uh, Go game was, was remaining unconquered by the AI mm -hmm. technology. Mm -hmm. So this is a huge achievement uh, of AI. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, business-wise, um, Google and Google DeepMind has increased uh, uh, their values in the uh, in market, in the in, in stock billions. market as well. Uh, I yeah. saw that uh, uh, Alphabet, which is a new name for a Google company, uh, they, they have A series and C series sh shares. And uh, the, the estimation is that the, after the match, um, maybe because of the match or uh, yeah. along with the match, uh, their value increase is uh, staggering. It's uh, close to 50 to $60 billion. So <laughs> right, right. that indicates <clears throat> the interest of the people that uh, they have. And uh, not only financially, I guess there is a a, a significant gain uh, for the Google team because of the fame? Um, as far as Google is concerned, mm -hmm. they had a chance to see what will be the uh, problems in the machine learning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they may uh, try to develop another new technologies to compensate for the shortcomings in the current machine learning. Mm -hmm. That is the one uh, chance uh, for the Google to get uh, in the series games. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And second one is, uh, uh, as you mentioned, Google was tremendously spotlighted in the worldwide media. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's uh, more than 60 billion. Uh, right, their investment uh, reportedly is about 2 million, yeah. <laughs> including the prize money. Uh, and uh, as far as uh, AI uh, specialist is concerned, uh, maybe um, uh, publics as well as uh, AI specialists uh, think that they, uh, Google will be the best um, AI companies in the mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. is the uh, big uh, gains in the series game, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that those big gains, uh, as Professor so talked about, and the big gains in the stock market is not uh, only because AlphaGo has proven to be very good at Go games. I, I think people are counting on the fact that this same kind of logic and algorithm uh, can be transferred to other fields. I, I, th I think that uh, attests to the big gains. Uh, for example, like medicine and uh, automobile industries that uh, the artificial intelligence already is playing some role. Do you think that the, the, this AlphaGo kind of logic and this kind of uh, fame can be transferred or uh, can be applicable to many other fields. Right. Um, AlphaGo is designed to solve the Go game specifically, mm -hmm. but the technologies they have used is a very general. Mm. Uh, deep learning mm. and reinforcement learning are um, machine learning techniques that can be applied to uh, many different applications. Mm -hmm. As you said, uh, for example, that can be applied to predict the stock market. Mm, mm, or mm. Uh, uh, making a prognosis of the uh, disease mm -hmm. in human patients mm -hmm. so that it can choose the right medicine mm -hmm. in the future. Mm -hmm. mm. I, I think um, AlphaGo is very tasty food. So tasty when, food? Tasty food, yes. Mm. So when we <clears throat> cook the very tasty food, we need um, some cooking tools like oven or refrigerator or right. some other mm, right. tools. And uh, we need uh, some best of uh, some cooking materials like uh, vegetables, mm -hmm. and we need, uh, we need some recipe mm -hmm. how to make the very delicious food. Right. And we need chef. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think that AlphaGo okay. is a very tasty food, and big number of Go manuals will be um, uh, cooking materials, and uh, deep learning and reinforcement learning, as um, Professor Chang say. It can be viewed as a cooking pan or oven, and mm -hmm. uh, policy networks and value networks and other settings of parameters mm -hmm. uh, required mm -hmm. in the uh, play uh, will be the uh, recipe. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. finally, AI engineers are the chefs. I see. So it, it means that they, uh, um, I expect lots of application AI will be uh, 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 ready, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, if mm -hmm. the, uh, the recipe and big data are ready. 
And uh, if uh, um, some uh, AI engineer is very, very smart, then uh, level of performance of the AI uh, will test all the Turing tests in all areas mm. of mm. application. It's a very apt uh, comparison. If anything is missing in cooking, uh, certainly we know that, that the food tastes terrible, but <laughs> everything has to kind of work together yeah. as a work of art. But th that uh, begs a question um, of the, the fair, fair, fair importance, and the, this could sound more like a trick question as well. Uh, the question is, would AI surpass human intelligence? Now, that question is a loaded one because we have to uh, uh, kind of uh, define what the human intelligence is. Now, AlphaGo, uh, their, its aim is to win the game, so win or lose. And you mentioned uh, if it's transferred or the applied apply to the stock market, then it's the price go up or down. That's a very simple outcome that yeah. uh, you have to kind of legislate. But human intelligence is much more than that. So is that a fair question to, to put to you? Uh, can you answer whether AI can surpass human intelligence? Probably in the longer term future, the machine can surpass in many different uh, tasks um, in, than the humans. Mm -hmm. But the current AlphaGo, for example, is a missing uh, the perception and action capability, for example. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have any uh, body, mm -hmm. so it doesn't have any emotion. Mm -hmm. So um, it's going to be take, uh, taking a lot of time to uh, simulate or uh, imitate the, the human intelligent, real intelligent mm -hmm. behavior. Mm -hmm. So the scientists predict uh, it will take at least three decades from now um, for AI to excel human intelligence I see. in general. I see. Does, you, does a machine require emotion to surpass a human intelligence? I mean, that sounds good, but let me hear from you. Maybe emotion itself not, might be so important, but philosophically, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, the machine can have autonomy or free will or mm -hmm. kind of a real human-like consciousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Probably the body and the kind of emotion is a prerequisite for I achieving see. that kind of autonomy. I see. So. We've discussed about recent matches between AlphaGo and Isedol. Uh, now we already turn to the ongoing uh, controversies over artificial intelligence. Uh, but let's watch the, the prepared video footage first. A recent historic match between artificial intelligence program AlphaGo and a professional Go player Izhedol has made the most headlines. And now we have faced a new era of artificial intelligence. Expectations and concerns have been raised over the rise of the artificial intelligence. Employment issue has been considered as one of the biggest challenges. On the World Economic Forum held in January, concerns were raised over the possibility of artificial intelligence taking away people's jobs. According to the Future of Jobs report, rise of the robots will eliminate more than 5 million jobs by the year 2020. A survey from related businesses has shown that the jobs based on information and data are expected to be replaced quickly along with the development of robots with artificial intelligence. For example, Goldman Sachs, a global investment banking firm, has introduced an artificial intelligence program developed by Kensho Technologies for financial analysis. And Japanese banks have hired the humanoid robot Pepper for their banking businesses. Aside from the competition for jobs between humans and machines, there have been divided opinions on the possible mistakes that can be caused by artificial intelligence as it can threaten people's lives. Manless robots for wars, medical devices and driverless vehicles are the examples that have been placed at the center of those controversies. To what extent should artificial intelligence take responsibility for? Ethical issues associated with artificial intelligence have still been proliferating. 
strong voices of opposition have been raised over the development of artificial intelligence. People have raised concerns over the expected damages that can be caused by indiscriminate technology development and urge to stop the development of artificial intelligence, which can be a huge threat to humanity. Artificial intelligence, or AI, has become one of the rising industries in the near future. Global society has kept its eyes on the expected impact of artificial intelligence on the humanity as well as the future society. About a month ago, we had the same program, actually, uh, you were the guests, to talk about artificial intelligence. Of course, it was before the matches. But at the time, uh, there were a lot of different uh, questions and also issues came out. But uh, after the matches, uh, now that we talked about how uh, it garnered a worldwide uh, attention to it, do you think that now has come a beginning of the era of artificial intelligence? Uh, or what kind of impact do you think uh, that uh, this, <coughs> this match has had on the artificial intelligence <coughs> field in general? Um, the AlphaGo match has generated a lot of attention of public, as well as the industry and the government, even the government. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and uh, also, in terms of uh, technological advancement, mm -hmm. I think uh, this is uh, the time now to really start the AI research. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, because uh, we have now more data from uh, sensors uh, because of the wearable devices and mm -hmm. the Internet of Things and uh, the mobile robots, they, they generate a new, really new kind of data than the text-based uh, data AlphaGo has used. Mm. So mm. Uh, we can really use that kind of a new data to build a really human-like mm -hmm. machines. When do you think that the AI has earnestly started uh, being a center of um, attention? The world AI um, mm -hmm. uh, appeared in 1950 uh -huh. in Dartmouth conference. Um, which may be regarded as the first uh, AI uh, workshop in mm -hmm. the world, I think. Um, at that time, they would like to discuss about uh, how to make a yeah, thinking computer. Mm -hmm. uh, but since then, um, we experienced uh, several up and down in AI okay. researches mm -hmm. and industry. Uh, but uh, now we have the uh, very new uh, breakthrough um, AI algorithm like uh, deep learning, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, makes us uh, review the old AI technologies. And, uh, mm -hmm. So as Professor Chang say, um, the, uh, even uh, uh, automobile industry and uh, some other uh, industrial companies like uh, robotics or other uh, they, uh, they have the very, very uh, special interest in uh, developing the AI like uh, AlphaGo. Mm -hmm. uh, there are two paradigms in developing AI. One is the physics-based AI. Mm -hmm. So we have to uh, know how uh, everything works based on the physics. And then we set up the mathematical models to explain that kind of physical principles. Mm -hmm. And then we apply that uh, physical principles to physics pr pr principles to applications. Mm -hmm. And then we try to um, uh, fix some parameters to adapt to some specific applications. Mm -hmm. That is the one paradigm. The mm -hmm. other paradigm is so we don't have to have the uh, uh, exact uh, physics models. Mm. So we set up the, some kind of very deep uh, neural net, artificial neural networks, mm -hmm. and we provide the data, I see. and then try to learn <coughs> then networks to um, learn some very interesting aspects in the data. After all, the, the learning result will show some performance of the physics-based AI. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. You even mm -hmm. start passing uh, physics-based AI. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, almost all uh, engineers show interest to using deep learnings. Mm -hmm. So they, big uh, data-driven approaches. Mm -hmm. That's the mm -hmm. big uh, shift from the old um, uh, paradigm to new paradigm. Mm, mm, so mm. I think that they, uh, it is the uh, stepping, the initial stepping mm -hmm. on the era of uh, uh, AI, I think. I see, yeah. I see. But uh, does, it, uh, does it change? Uh, when we describe the computer, we sometimes say garbage in, garbage in and garbage oh, out. Well. And one of the things that you mentioned uh, in the interim was that uh, in order to have uh, the good functioning algorithms, you have to have a conditions or the setups uh, right. Uh, that means you have to uh, tell them what's the good outcome and uh, what's the bad outcome. Uh, I mean, the AlphaGo's case, winning is good, losing is bad. The stock market's case, price up is good and down is bad. So but maybe there are some cases where the parameters is pretty good. Uh, but in terms of how, what kind of data to feed and what kind of conditions you provide, I mean, it, it presupposes that you can control the machine and the outcome, even though you don't know what the outcome is, but you know what direction it is heading. But with the deep learning and the, the, the human hunches and all those, isn't that a concern that at some point we cannot really control uh, the AI or the, the, the direction it's taking. Is that a concern, genuine concern for you? If we really have fully autonomous uh, robots or machines, mm -hmm. then we should be concerned very much, actually. But I think still, uh, it still is a far cry to have a fully autonomous machines having sensors and actuators. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so um, I think uh, we need to prepare for the future in terms of uh, legal, ethical, and uh, social issues as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little bit of pushback is that some people say, well, AI is like internet. I mean, you develop something, a lot of, a lot of different uh, inputs go into constituting uh, this whole field of internet. Can you turn off internet? No, we can't. Then, <laughs> is that an apt a comparison? No, I, I don't agree. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, uh, in order to make the uh, AI like AlphaGo, mm -hmm. uh, up to now, uh, we have to pre-process the data. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, in case of AlphaGo, uh, 30 uh, million um, Go manuals. Mm -hmm. uh, because the deep learning machine cannot read the manual directly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So in case of AlphaGo, uh, Davis Hassabis is the father of AlphaGo. Mm -hmm. He said that um, it took four years to pre-process the data and uh, put some labeling on the data. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. The second one is that uh, AI is uh, not live. So mm -hmm. AI, uh, life needs some, uh, some fightings for getting food or for protecting families or for mating partners or for mm -hmm. survivor. Mm -hmm. uh, because AI is not life, AI will not compete with the human mm -hmm. unless mm -hmm. AI is asked by human to compete with the human. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, somebody uh, use AI to make weapons. It is not the wheel of technology. Yeah, so, mm, uh, mm. so I think that, that we uh, carefully uh, try to use the AI uh, to be the, some tools for the better of the human life. I see. Yeah. It, it, on that particular point, the competition between human, uh, let, let's talk about jobs. Uh, there is a big concern that, mm. well, AI is taking jobs away. Um, the, the, the argument goes that, uh, like the telephone or computers, uh, to a, up, to, up to a certain uh, extent, they augment what humans do. 
I mean, computers, you need an operator, and the telephones, it's becoming a tool for people to do it. But AI is a little bit different, people say, that it replaces uh, human beings in a limited or, or large extent. So in terms of economic activities, uh, they, you see that a lot of factories are all, uh, fully automated these days. Like fashion, the AI is a big threat for human economic activities. They are job takers. Do you agree? In some sense. Um, in the longer term, uh, maybe AI will replace some positions of jobs, professional positions. Mm -hmm. But um, at first, we need to develop the technology for really building real AI. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we still miss the people, <coughs> researchers. And uh, if I take analogy to computers, for example, <coughs> in 1950s and 60s, people were very worried about losing their jobs. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, many people lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. But uh, in addition to that, uh, AI also, uh, the computers also generated a lot of new jobs mm -hmm. and now became the whole industry of IT and software. Mm -hmm. So there, there are always the two sides of the uh, issues. Right, the, the two sides, one of the estimations I saw was that the IDC uh, or, or it was, there was an uh, um, uh, Oxford study that says uh, by year 2033, uh, half of all jobs can be replaced by the, the automated robots. Um, and Davos Forum uh, recently said that uh, the good news is that the jobs will be created because of the AI uh, in the order of 2 million jobs. But because of the AI, they lose a seven million jobs. So mm. every year, they might be losing five million jobs. I mean, the cal calculation might be a little bit different. Um, where do you come down on the, this issue? Yes, uh, in some sense, I agree. Yeah. Um, AI surpassing HI that I have mentioned mm -hmm. will replace the human jobs very quickly, the lawyer service or a medical diagnosis. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, AI mimicking HI, uh, will slowly replace the humans. Mm. So mm. It replaced mm. the human senses, but very, very slowly replaced the human uh, jobs, mm. requiring that kind of um, uh, human five senses. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually, AI replaces uh, human jobs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that the uh, jobs dealing with uh, emotion will be available for human. Mm. Mm -hmm. And uh, jobs which need face-to-face -face communications with the human mm -hmm. will mm -hmm. be survived and even spotlighted at that time. Mm -hmm. That, that will be the new jobs. Or, you know, right. I uh, see. Well, how about this argument, though? Some people say that uh, even if they don't become self-aware, uh, come up with uh, empathetic machines, uh, AI is replacing a lot of human jobs, like taking care of kids mm -hmm. and, and helping the disabled and those um, uh, things, and also cooking side as well. Mm -hmm. The humans develop this dependency on the mm -hmm. machine and the mm -hmm. AI, mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. has a, a, a tremendous advantage, I guess, because they are being helped. But at the same time, that has impact of kind of destroying the human relationship uh, as previously formed with the different you know, functions that humans did. As they, er, the, the functionality of the humans erode or, or the scope being narrowed, mm. the, the human society is not gonna be the same. They will depend more on machine and not on humans. Is that uh, another uh, possible scenario for, the, mm -hmm. for the, the erosion of humanity? Uh, maybe the definition of humanity might be changing as well mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. technology develops. I see. Because of technology and the humans uh, are co-evolving each other. Mm -hmm. So a smartphone might be an example. So earlier, 10 years ago, uh, we, we had no problems uh, not without using smartphones. Mm -hmm. But now we, we are depending on that. But it also helps us a lot and make uh, more better decisions uh, easily and uh, faster. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, with that help, we can do uh, different things that could not mm -hmm. be done by uh, us uh, earlier. Mm -hmm. So having uh, AI as a tool or um, assistance systems for humans, maybe we can uh, level up uh, the tasks we should do. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, um, um, as for me, if AI machines are programmed to show some kind of gestures or say some encouraging remarks to human, mm -hmm. then the human feel AI robot um, as partners by so-called Eliza effect. Mm -hmm. uh, human, but some humans get shortly bo boring, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, of his simple programming or uh, some programmed uh, emotional gestures and remarks. But some other people show much interest and would like to use that AI uh, much that everybody expected. So, I see. so that, that uh, phenomenon may be uh, explained as addiction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, in the future, we may need some caring system for AI audited people. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, there are a lot of controversies, it seems, uh, including, I guess, the liability issues as well. Uh, rise of controversies over artificial intelligence means that uh, it has attracted a lot of global attention uh, as an emerging industry in the near future. Uh, Korea has shown its will uh, to actively participate in uh, fostering artificial intelligence as a new driving force in the industry. Up front, I had a chance to meet an expert who is also known as the first generation scholar who started studies on the artificial intelligence. Uh, take a look. 인공지능은... Artificial intelligence has good sense of judgment, and AlphaGo also showed its formidable calculative power when it had Go games with the Go Grandmaster Lee Sedo. AlphaGo showed precise moves with its intelligence to make the best decisions. However, despite its superior capability, artificial intelligence program doesn't have its own will or emotions. There have been science fiction films that show artificial intelligence with desires and emotions, However, that is pure fiction that can only be seen in the films. Of course, artificial intelligence has an ability to calculate and make decisions by analyzing the data. And it can follow most of the works that humans do, but that is all. That is the current status of artificial intelligence in the field of science and technology. We as humans should find ways to coexist with machines as we are living in the era of remarkable technological development. At the beginning, machines will replace jobs that are mostly unwanted by human beings. And in the end, it will be possible to see the field that human beings are totally excluded. Machines can replace simple works that don't need human intervention. However, machines can't perform complex works that require a sensible opinion based on logical thinking. There are some ways to deal with the expected challenges in terms of the development of artificial intelligence. First of all, we should divide work of humans and machines. Each of them should divide their work based on the areas they can be good at, and humans and machines should not interrupt each other's territory. The best way is to make machines help humans works. Machines can replace works that humans couldn't do because of their physical and time limits. That would be the best way for both humans and machines to coexist, so we should put a lot of efforts on building such an environment. So uh, this is a burgeoning field and very important field, as we talked about. Uh, but uh, people say that Korea is a little bit behind, despite being an IT powerhouse. Uh, people say two, two, three years behind, maybe uh, more. Um, probably we should talk about what we can do uh, as, as a government or industry uh, to uh, either catch up or be the leader in the field. Uh, what's your opinion? Yes. Um let me uh, talk about the, uh, uh, what the Korean government has to do and what mm -hmm. Korean industry has to do for the future of uh, AI. The first is uh, we need the new grand challenges like uh, uh, AlphaGo to become not fast follower, but uh, create a leader in both research and development and the business in AI uh, and robotics field. <coughs> 
Mm -hmm. uh, for mm -hmm. example, cooking competition of AI, uh, robot chef and human chef in Michelin class. Mm -hmm. They may be very interesting um, uh, uh, challenges. I see. Second one is we need to set up the creative educational systems to foster AI and its related professionals. Mm -hmm. And third one is the big data owned by government need to be open to public. Mm -hmm. And first is the supercomputing or cloud computing infra has to be prepared and open to educational organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, if uh, this, this kind of uh, uh, preparations are ready, mm -hmm. then Korea will uh, fastly follow the, uh, uh, the leader of the uh, AI uh, com uh, countries. I see. It's the same question to you, uh, Professor Zhang. Uh, this will be the last remark of the discussion. Right. I think uh, Korea has much potential in uh, leading the future of AI industry. Mm. In the end, it, it is a business of human resources. Korea is one of the most uh, competitive countries in well-educated uh, um, human resources. Mm -hmm. And the government needs to innovate the economic culture so that the young people have an entrepreneurship and found uh, new startups. Mm -hmm. And big companies um, should uh, be more active in discovering, uh, accelerating, and acquiring startups with the uh, proper valuation, that's important, mm -hmm. proper valuation, to feed the uh, new blood and keep leading the competitive edges of, in global businesses. Mm -hmm. Let me say about the uh, two very important things of the AI. First one is the AI and robots will contribute to the remarkable increase of productivity, which mm -hmm. will make a human keep good quality of life. <coughs> Second one is AI and robots will save a human life by finding new resources, by developing new medicines, and by rescuing people in the disasters. <coughs> mm. This is the big two contributions of AI. I think the ultimate goal of artificial intelligence is to empower and augment the human mind. Mm. Building robotic assistants that have a human level intelligence and communicate naturally with the humans will be a good way to achieve the goal. And that can also generate a lot of industry and new jobs. Thank you for sharing your insights today. It seems to be inevitable that the artificial intelligence will take a vital place in the human society, much beyond playing games with people. Whether it will be a threat or opportunity will be hotly debated years to come. But it is also apparent that it is up to us humans as to how they will turn out. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.